Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day just to always give Him the thanks right now. Always give Him the praise and always give Him the glory. Because God is good all the time, hallelujah. And all the time, God is good. And He is so worthy. And He is so worthy to be praised. I don't know about you today, my brothers, my sisters, but I need him every second, every minute, every hour of my life. I can't do it without Jesus. I can't even make it without Jesus. I can't even comprehend without Jesus. And if you think, if you absolutely think that you can do it and make it without Jesus, let me see how far that you're going to go. Let me see how far that you're going to make it. Because I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, that you will always fall flat right on your face. You cannot do anything without him. It's impossible to move him. It's impossible to please him according to what the word of God says. So I don't know about you. I need him because I can't do this right here by myself. I can't make it by myself. So I'm not ashamed to let him know that I need him. I'm not ashamed to let him know that sometimes I'm, I'm, I, I, sometime I be in fear. I let him know because you got to keep it real with God. That's the only way that God can actually help you. That's the only way that God can step in and start fighting your battles for you. You got to keep it real with him. You got to be honest with him. There's no shame. He already know what time it is. So go ahead and admit to it. God, I need you. God, I don't know what I'm about to go through. I don't know what I'm about to face. But God, I'm a little, I'm a little shaken up about this, God. God, I don't know how this is going to turn out, God. So yes, God, I got some butterflies in me. I'm shaking, I'm nervous, I'm thinking I might lose. So when you let God know what time it is, you let God know how you're feeling, that's when he's going to step in and take care of what you can't take care of. All you got to do is sit back in this chair and relax and let God take care of the rest. But if you think that you can do it without God, you're going to lose every time. That's why a lot of you right now today, you lost already. That's why you're failing already. That's why you're already ashamed right now because you thought that you can do it without Jesus. You thought that you were bigger than Jesus. You thought that you were stronger than Jesus. And you thought that you knew more than Jesus. So Jesus said, okay, I'm going to sit back to the side. I'm going to sit back and see what you can do without me. Because I already know what the, what the outcome going to be. And I promise you, you'll go back begging. I promise you that you'll need him for he needs you. Praise is an everyday thing, my brothers and my sisters. It's not an on and off switch thing, and it's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. That's why I thank him the way I do. That's why I praise him the way I do. That's why I glorify his holy name the way I do, because I need him. He is my rock. He is my refuge. He is my salvation, and he is my protector in the mighty name of Jesus. Give God some praise in the house of the Lord right now. Give God some praise right now. Amen. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers, my sisters, to come together to fellowship in your house today, to praise you in your house today, to glorify you in your house today, to seek you in your house today, to shout out your holy name in your house today, to exalt your holy name in your house today. Father God, you have your way with us in your house today. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. So God, that's what we're doing in your house right now today. We are praising in your house. We are praying in your house. We have a service and we have a fellowship in your house right now today. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones, our laptops, our desktops, our iPad, or whatever gadget that we have, or whatever gadget that we're using, God. Father God, we know that you're in the midst of it. Father God, we know that you are working everything out. Father God, we know it's already um, it's already solved. Father God, we know that you are already turning things around in our favor right now today, God. So, Father God, we give you the thanks for in advance. We give you the praise for in advance. And we give you the glory for in advance. Father God, we came here for a reason today. We came here for a purpose. And God, we ain't leaving your house till we leave here full and satisfied. Father God, you know every last one I need. You know every last one I concerns. You know everything that we're going through. You know everything that we're dealing with. You know,
you know, everything that we facing, God. So, God, we're casting all our problems, all that situation, all that stress on you right now today, God, because it's been wearing us down, God. And, God, you know it's been wearing us down. So, God, we'll let you know right now that we cannot go no longer feeling this way anymore. So, we're emptying all our burdens onto you right now today because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that cast everything to you. Not some of it, not half of it, not 99.9 .9 of it, but you want the whole shebang. So, God, we're giving it to you right now, God, because we know that you're going to take of it right now. We bind every demonic spirit right now today that's trying to come towards myself, my brothers, my sisters right now. We cast you. You are destroyed by the fire in Jesus' name on, on earth as well as in heaven right now. Father God, allow your spirit to move through this house right now today. Father God, let your words to move through us right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you right now to do a new thing in my brothers and my sisters' life right now. Father God, you continue to do a new thing in my life. Father God, we put our faith and our trust and hope in you, God. God, we know that you're going to come through. We don't know when, God, but, but we serve a God who always come on time. So, God, we're giving you the thanks right now, and we're giving you the praise. We're here today to let you know that we are available for our assignment, our mission, our task, that we are also available to serve and honor and magnify your holy name today in your house today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move in this house. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to my brothers and my sisters today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now today to open my brothers and sisters' eyes let them see what they need to see from you today. Open up their ears and let them hear what they need to hear from you today because we're going to receive good news today. Oh, Father God, we thank you and we praise you in your holy, precious, mighty name. And let the church come together and say glory, hallelujah, amen, and amen. And before I get, before I get this thing started, I'm here today to repent of our sins right now. Yes, we dropped the ball today. Yes, we made some mistakes today. Father God, I'm asking you right now today in your holy, precious, mighty name, please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for every anything, God, we done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for every anything, God, we done wrong that was not right in your heart, God. Please forgive me, my brothers and sisters, for every anything, God, that we participated in our mind, God, that was not part of your will. Purify us, God. Cleanse up as white as snow today, God. Purify us through your blood right now today, God. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. I want to say thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. I want to say thank you, Father God, for listening, listening to us and understanding, God, what we did wrong. I want to say thank you, Father God, for a second chance. I want to say thank you, Father God, for another opportunity. I want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did it for us anyway. Thank you, Jesus. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came thanking you for this awesome and beautiful, blessed day today. I came thanking you for this word right now. I came thanking you for this anointing message. I just came thanking you for the air that we was able to breathe right now today. I came thanking you for your grace and your mercy. I came thanking you for our health and our strength. I came thanking you, Father God, for your words and your promises. I came thanking you, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on my table and the clothes and shoes that you put on my back. I just came thanking you, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I came thanking you for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I just came thanking you, Father God, because you are healing, you also a provider. I just came thanking you, Father God, because you are a man that you will not fail us, that you will not let us down, that you will never leave us or forsake us. I just came thanking you, Father God, because you are a man that you should not. I lie, God, that you stand on your word, that you stand on your promises. I just came thank you, Father God, because you can you always on time. I just came thank you, Father God, that we can always call you and you always right there. Whenever we need a shoulder crown, you right there. Whenever I need somebody to talk to, you're always right there. When I when I don't have nobody else, God, you was always right there. And I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. And we don't even see and we don't even realize it right now. I just can't thank you, Father God for our blessing right now. I can't thank for our breakthrough right now. I can't thank for our anointing right now. I can't thank for our deliverance right now. I can't thank for our double portion right now. I can't thank for our more than enough right now. I can't thank for the open doors. I can't thank for the door that you have closed. I can't thank for the connection. I can't thank for the resources. I can't thank for the rain. I can't thank for the help. I can't 
thinking for the overflow. I can't even think, you know, Father God, for the abundance of life, God, that you are giving your kids today, Father God. Whatever was the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy, but you coming in to give us life and the abundance of life and more than enough of life all happening with this God. And I just can't think enough. I can't think, no, Father God, for the sunshine. I just can't think, no, Father God, that we better run into the light. I just can't even think, no, Father God, that because everything about to start manifesting in our life, everything about to start coming together. I just can't even think, no, Father God, for our harvest that we're going to reap this year in the year 2020. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do Because I can't thank you enough That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do Because I can't thank you enough That's why I pour my heart out to you every day Jesus Because I can't thank you enough That's why I'm in love with you the way I am Because I can't thank you enough That's why I'm always talking about you That's why I'm always bragging about you That's why I'm always boasting about your name Jesus Because I can't thank you I just 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 can't thank you Even if I gotta say it by myself Jesus I just can't thank you enough I I just can't thank you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But God, we can't thank you enough in the house of the Lord. We all have someone who came against us, who did us dirty, who did us wrong who deceived us, who betrayed us, who hurted us, who shamed us. And we look like, what did we do wrong to you? I didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it, my brothers. You didn't deserve it, my sisters. But it happened. I know it happened. You know it happened. Now we're at the point right now we're realizing what is going on. And God sent me this word early this morning, my brothers and my sisters. When I say early this morning, I'm talking about by 415 early this morning as I was sitting there reading my Bible, meditating, drinking my cup of coffee. And I was just sitting there waiting for a word. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me so softly and gently. He said, they're all going to fall down one by one. All who came against you, all who deceived you, all who tricked you, all who done you dirty, all who betrayed you, all who left you in the dirt, all of them who left you in the dark, all of them who done you wrong. Because one person done you wrong, you know that person told that other person, and that person told that other person, and that person told that other person. So you realize why did all of them come against you when only it was only between you and that person. The other people swear they was down with you. The other people swear they had your back, but the, that person right there persuaded him and her. It persuaded it persuaded the parents, it persuaded the brothers and sisters. Now they say, you know, everybody's against you. Now the people at the job is against you. Now people at the church are against you. Now people, at the, now people in your neighborhood are against you. Now people at the gym are against you. And you said, but it was only between me and him and him and her. So why in the world did all y'all come against me when I was talking to y'all? Y'all said that y'all had my back. When I was talking to y'all, y'all say y'all knew that I was telling the truth. Next thing you know, y'all Oh, flip the strip on me. And it made you feel some type of way. It made you feel some type of way. Come on, somebody. You ain't telling me nothing. I know. Because I went through the same thing. But one thing I know about my God, my brothers and sisters, whoever have beef with you, they got beef with him. Whoever have turmoil with you, they got turmoil with him. Whoever deceived you, they deceived him. Whoever broke your heart, they broke his heart. Whoever done you dirty, they done him dirty. Whoever done you wrong, they done him wrong. Whoever tried to shame you, they shame him. But God said, don't worry about that. Now it's my time. Good God Almighty. He said, all you do is sit still and know that I'm God. The word of God says, sit still. He said, you sit still and know that my words and my promises are true. You ain't got to do nothing. He said, the battle 
don't even belong to you. The war does not belong to you. Everything belongs to me because I'm going to take care of that problem for you. I, it's already fixed. It's already solved. The cake already been baked right now, my brothers, my sisters. You might not even know about it right now. You might not even realize it right now. But God says it's already been done. It's already been fixed. You better see a major turnaround. The same person who done you like they're going to be the same person about to come back to visit you and say, I'm sorry. Can you please forgive me? I didn't mean to do that. I was tripping on something. I don't know what I smoked that day, but I should never smoke that. I don't know I was drinking that day, but I should never drunk that. I don't know what the devil told me to do that, that day, but I should never listen to him because I know he was a liar and I know he's a deceiver. But God said it's too late. You don't realize what you've done to my son. You don't realize what you've done to my daughters. You don't realize the pain that you cause, the heartache that you cause the turmoil that you cause, the trouble that you cause. Whatever you cause my son and my daughter, you cause me too. Whoever is your enemy, my brothers and my sisters, is always God's enemy too. And God had never lost against the enemy at all. So you already know he's going to take care of that for you, right? You should already know he's going to handle that business for you, right? Because he is. Because he, he specifically told me that this morning. He said, the reason why you're not hearing nothing from them because I'm already working on them right now. Eventually, they're going to come back and see you. But when they come back and see you, they're going to look a totally different way than what you saw them in the first beginning of it. It's because I'm handling my business with them. They handled you the wrong way. They done you the wrong way. When the only thing that you were doing was being respectful, you have been helpful, you have been loving, you have been kind, you have been joyful to him and her. You didn't deserve that. And everybody that was Paul with it, and everybody who put their two sin in it, he said, they're going to fall too. And I remember this one time, my brothers, my sisters, it was some years ago, that was before I moved to Georgia, and um, I was still in Charlotte, North Carolina at this time. And at this time, I was at work, and, and my heart was so heavy, and one of my coworkers, he knew it. And he, he pulled me outside, he said, brother, go ahead and let that thing guy go ahead and just cry. And just get it out. And he said, LT, he said, I know that you have been helpful towards a lot of people. I know you didn't like what they done to you. He said, I can't even imagine the pain that you're facing right now. I can't even imagine how hard, how hard, I mean, how hurt your heart is. He said, I can't even imagine the, uh, the deceit, how people just turned their back against you. And the only thing that you were doing was looking out for them, trying to be helpful. But he gave me this word this, that day, my brothers and my sisters. And then once he gave it to me, it cheered me up. And, and he spoke this word to me. He said, LT, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. He said, I ain't going to tell you that's going to happen today. I can't tell you it's going to happen tomorrow. I can't even tell you it's going to happen next week or next month. He said, but one thing I do know. He said, when it happens, you're going to know about it. And when it happens, you're going to feel sorry. You're going to feel sorry for him. And at this time, I wasn't even ministering to the word then. And just how he said it, it made me feel, it made me feel joyful. It made me feel like, okay, I know it was my fault, but I didn't deserve this. In the moment, moment Tyrone told me that, I promise you, my brothers and my sisters, it was less than three weeks. All of it, it was happening to all of them, one by one. It was like a domino effect. And I said, wow, that brother said that. So I'm here today to tell somebody right now today, it's all going to happen one by one and it's going to happen like a domino effect. The same word that that brother told me, what, 13, 14 years ago, it still sticks with me right now as of today. So I guess that's what God and the Holy Spirit spoke to me so vividly clear this morning. He said, remember what Tyrone told you this about 14, 15, about 14, 15 years ago, how somebody done you. He said, now it don't came right back again the same way. And he said, it's going to happen the same way. They all going to fall one by one. And he said, you're going to feel sorry for them. How I know? Let's turn our Bible to Isaiah 41. And we're going to read verses 9 through 11. Isaiah 41, verses 9 through 11. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, you are my servant. I've chosen you 
and have not rejected you. I said, not I, but God said, I. Look how he demand that I. I said, he tell you that. I said this, not your mother, not your father, not your grandparents, not your brothers, not your sisters, not your homeboys, not your homegirls, not your supervisor, not your pastor, not your friends, not your dogs, not your cat. But God said, I said it. Good God Almighty. You are my servant. You, my brothers, you, my sisters. I have chosen you. It's different between somebody being chosen and somebody being called. When God chooses you, you're on a whole other different level, my brothers and my sisters. When God chooses you, you're on a whole totally different platform. He said, but I chose you. I had picked you myself. I, I knew who you was personally before, before you knew that I was going to choose you. I already knew I, I had you when you was in your mother's womb. I already knew I had you when I was forming you out. I already chose you when you went left, and I know that you're going to come right. I chose you when you were doing wrong, but I know that you're going to do right. I chose you when you was in the world, but I know you're going to come back to the word of God. God said, I chose you. Mm. And you have not rejected you. So he said, do, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. When God said he's going to help you, you already know it's a win-win situation, a win-win situation right then and there. You can't even lose. And I know right now today that the enemy is telling you that God has forgotten about you. God gave it up on you. God ain't going to come through. If he was, you'd have been winning right now. If he was, you'd have been smiling right now. See, God always have a way to show the enemy, I'm going to let you win for this right here. But I know my son and my daughter's story. So I know I'm going to triumph over you every single time. So right now, that's what God is doing. God playing chess while the enemy is playing checkers. So a person that's playing chess can never be the person that's playing chess anyway because chess is a mental thing. Chess, you already you moving. Chess, you sitting there, you looking at the board, you strategizing. How you going to defeat your opponent? God already strategized the board. How, how you going to defeat your opponent and how he's going to triumph over your opponent. It's already been done. The cake already been big, my brothers, my sisters. Hallelujah. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is my part right here, verse 11. All who rages against you will surely be ashamed and disgrace. That's why he's telling me to tell you right now today. They all going to fall one by one because he said all who rages. So when he say all, oh, he knows the camp, he knows the posse, he knows the crew that came against you. It started with one, but that one went around the circle. That one went around the homeboys. That one went around the homegirls. That one went around the family. So all of them had their pieces of word to say about you, my brothers, my sisters. All of them said something bad. All of them say, oh, I wish you do this. I wish you do that. So all of them came against you. Not only one, but all of them had something to say about it. All of them knew what they was gonna. All of them knew what was gonna happen to you. All of them knew that there was a person that was gonna deceive you. They was gonna do you dirty. They, they was gonna leave you. All of them knew that that man, that sister, was cheating on you. They was not right for you. All of them knew. All of them knew their secrets. They all knew. And the first thing they say, "Oh, it's not in my business. I ain't got nothing to do with that." That's between y'all. Okay, but if the shoes on the other foot, you wouldn't have said that. If the shoes on the other foot, you would have helped your son and your daughter out. So why you help that son-in-law out? Why you help your daughter-in-law out? Why you help your brother and your sister out? You was against him and her too. So the word of God said, all. Oh. He didn't say some. He said, all. Oh. Who was part of that group. All oh, who was a part of that situation. You are part of this like he or she is. So you is no different from him or she. You this is worth because you didn't open up. You didn't man up. You didn't woman up. And you did not tell their brothers and sisters what was going down and what was about to happen. You laughed. You talked about it. And you slammed the door. You say, I ain't got nothing to do with it. But yes, you do. If you're a real man and woman of God, you would have spoke up and said, you know, that's not right. God don't like ugly. 
let me wash my hand with this, but you never did. You participated in the same organization crime that their brother and sister caused harm to their other brother and sisters. You just as worse as the one who done it. So yes, you are going to fall down with the one who started the situation. I'm here to tell you, you got beef with God too. And when you got beef with God, you got the wrong beef. When you got a problem with God, you cause the wrong problem. When you got a situation with God, you cause the wrong situation, my brothers and my sisters. That's why all of y'all are going down one by one. It's going to be like a domino effect. Get ready and see it, my brothers and my sisters. Those who oppose you will be nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. He said, but will be nothing. He said, they will all perish. They will all fade away. Every last one of them that came against you. Every last one of them who deceived you. Every last one of them turned their back against you. Every last one of them knew that every last one of them knew that you were gonna get hurt. Every last one of them knew that what was going down. Everyone, everyone who knew about the story, everyone who knew about the cheating, everyone who knew about the deceiving, everybody knew that, that they were trying to hurt you. They all going down one by one. It's right here in the word of God. This is what I go by. I don't go by what somebody is telling me. I go exactly what the word of God is telling me. He said they all will reap what they sow. Galatians 6 verse 7. So when you did that, you already threw the bad seed out there. Yeah, you might not have done it, but you was a part of it because you opened your mouth. You heard about the story. You knew about the situation, but you did, not, you did nothing to solve it. So yes, you came against him and her too. So yes, you're going to reap what you sow. It said, woe to the person who betrays the Son of Man. Matthew 26, 24. We are the sons and daughters of the Son of the Man. Are you getting what I'm, what I'm saying? The Word of God tells us in Matthew 26, verse 24. Woe to the person who betrays the Son of a Man. And we know God is a man, but we are the sons and daughters of the son of the man and won't mean severe pain, severe suffering because what you did. So yes, you all going down one by one and you all know God don't like ugly. God is good all the time and all the time God is good, but God sure don't like doing, God sure don't like ugly. God sure don't like somebody doing wrong to his son and his daughter. So now you got a problem with him. You got an issue with him. You got, you, you pick, you picked a fight with the wrong person, my brothers and my sisters. You don't even realize what you've done. But you've done it. You already cursed yourself from the beginning. You cursed yourself because you already had in your heart what you're going to do to that brother. You cursed yourself because you already had in your heart what you're going to do to that sister. And they tell us that in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 22. You already cursed. So whatever it was that you've done to him and her, you already done to you. Whatever it was that you've done to him or her, it's already done to you. It's already done to you. Because it was already in your heart. That's one thing that God always, he tests this every day. He want to make sure, is it pure? And y'all heart is not pure. So I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. But a lot of my brothers and sisters right now, we all in the same boat. We got deceived. We got done wrong. We got done dirty. Ain't like we, we, we wishing for anything to be bad to happen to y'all. We already done prayed to you. But we also know you came against us when we never came against you. We done right by you, but you deceived us. We had your back, but you turned your back against us. We was there to help you, but you deceived us. You done us dirty. You played us. You used us. You manipulated us. You cheated on us. You broke our heart and you said you didn't care nothing about us no more. And everyone that was a part of that situation that knew it, you all going to fall down one by one. Because the word of God says, all who rages against you will surely be ashamed and disgrace. The word of God said, the word of God tells us in Psalm 25 verse 3 that he will never allow our enemy to shame us, that he will shame our enemies. Once you become my enemy, you become God's enemy. And God knows to take care of the enemy. And he's telling me to tell you right now today, 
my brothers, my sisters. I'm going to take care of that for you. All you got to do is sit back and relax. I know it's making you feel uncomfortable. I know that you still hurt. I know that you're still going through it right now. I know that you're still facing it. But guess what? They got beef with me now. They got a problem with me now. I'm your father. I'm going to take care of that. The cake already been baked. It's already been solved. Everybody that came against you. Everybody that done you wrong. Everybody that was part of the same group. They all going to fall one by one. And God said, you're going to know about it. You might feel sorry. You might feel shame about it. But God said, go ahead and wash your hands and keep going. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who this word for today. But he told me to tell you, just relax. It's already done. God, I came here this afternoon to tell your sons and your daughters everything that you want me to tell them. God, I came down here to tell them, to enlighten them, God. And I gave them your words. And I gave them your promises. And I gave them strict directions on exactly what you told me to tell them today. So, God, I believe and I declare, God, that they all want to fall one by one sooner than later. I believe and I declare right now today, God, that you already don't, you are, that you already don't flip the strip on everyone who came against your sons and your daughters, God. Father God, I thank you for healing our heart. I thank you, God, for putting, this, putting our heart back together, God. I just thank you, Father God, how you still strengthening us, how you still helping us, how you still guiding us, and how you still directing us, God, even if we're going through this ugly situation right now. God, I thank you, God, that we can always call, count, and depend, rely on your holy name because you are God of gods. And God, we thank you, God, for handling our business for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and your hope in God no matter what. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to this serving minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you. Amen.